I wanted to say is um, don't, don't be fooled by the internet. It's, it's cool, it's cool to get on the computer, but don't let the computer get on you. It's cool. It's cool to use the computer. Don't let the computer use you. You all saw the Matrix. Our newly crowned King Charles III, whose lifelong passion for the arts we will be celebrating throughout the show. He himself, of course, is a painter, an artist, the artist formerly known as Prince. There is a war going on, the battlefields in the mind, and the prize is the soul. So, let's be careful. Be very careful. In your own time, and straight to the camera, please. Dylan Hardy. Applying for audio biometrics with a specialty in spatial unification. Agnes Day, 81. Cognitive psychology. Maddie Romero, 117. Cybernetic ethics and philosophy. Rollo Phipps, 993. Neuroengineering. Jackson Freeman, 909. Applied quantum biology. Technology offers us evolution without and the machine develops, but not on our lines. The machine proceeds, but not to our goal. We only exist as the blood corpuscles that course through its arteries, and if it could work without us, it would let us die. E.M. Forster, The Machine Stops, 1906 an increasing number of modern Frankensteins, that is, who thought they were creating saviors for the world, are now repenting and talking about the dangers, or the uncontrolled growth of artificial intelligence. One recently resigned from Google and said, I made a great mistake, I should never have started on this. A, a very prominent founder of neuroscience. ENR, Emotional Neural Reader. Ludwig van Beatbox. That's what I call my processor. See, you don't uh, program Ludwig. He, uh, he feels you. He frame grabs your mind. Music made by my tears only. This connects me to what? The faculty surveillance network. And it's the condition of entry that we wear with. Everyone at all times for your own security. So, I then look at the way, look at how artificial intelligence uh, and particularly compute, uh, its computer um, uh, intelligence has grown. And one of the points I make is this has actually grown out of military. We want more k efficient killing machines. And therefore a lot of it came out of the Second World War and the Cold War. And then it had civilian spin-offs. But military, military needs were a very, very important part. I doubt whether we'd have the machinery or technology we now have had it not been for military demand. Then I discussed the question of consciousness. In what sense are AIs conscious? In what sense are they aware of what they're doing. They may be able to do it very efficiently, but are, are they aware of what they're doing? And, and have they got an attitude towards it? And this is, this is very, very important because um, otherwise, in what, what, in what sense can you call them intelligent? I mean, what do we mean by intelligence? Do you believe in organized religion? There is no life after death because there is no death. Just a doorway. Ian, all this, this whole idea came to me on a suicide Tuesday. So there you go, people. That's a positive drug story. Perhaps the person that inspired you? Uh, yeah, I'd say there was. The Dalai Lama meeting Anton Zeilinger. Two hands embracing, locked together. Sir Henry Head. And he is 
Victoria neurologist. He wanted to know how the brain perceives pain. So, one by one, he cut the nerve fibers of his own body. To get somewhere, sometimes you gotta go too far. The, the contraceptive pill was the first transhumanist technology. Mm -hmm. And that in fact, I mean, today, you know, people, there's, a, there's been a lot of chat about transhumanism recently mm -hmm. and people think of, you know, you know us I mean, humans merging with machines or, you know, give, give, giving ourselves robot arms or yeah. grafting tentacles onto ourselves, onto our faces or something unhinged like that. But yeah. in reality, um, if, you're, if, a, if we take as a sort of basic definition of transhumanism, the idea that we can and should upgrade our human physiology potentially indefinitely in, in, in line with our desires, mm -hmm. then the contraceptive pill is is the first transhumanist technology mm -hmm. because that was it, it, it's a total paradigm shift in what medicine is for because mm -hmm. it, it's it doesn't it doesn't set out to fix something that's wrong with me like a broken arm or you know my, a, a, full, a, a kidney that's not working properly mm -hmm. it sets out to break something that's working properly in in accordance with desire and then um, I uh, say that really. Um, where do we get our intelligence from? And most neuroscientists say, well, it's just part of the brain. But it's a very complicated part of the brain. It, it, our brains are more complex than that of animals. Therefore, we have consciousness, but they don't, so to speak. The problem is people have been looking for the mind for a long time and they can't find it. They find the brain, but can the brain can the mind be reduced to lots of atoms swirling around up here? That explains the brain, but does it explain the mind? And if it doesn't explain the mind, how do we account for intelligence? AI can now make entire TV commercials. For the first time in history, an AI created all of the assets needed to create a commercial for a very uncanny pizza restaurant. Pizza later on Twitter used GPT-4, Midjourney, and Eleven Labs for script, images, and voiceover respectively. The pieces were put together in After Effects, and the result is disturbing. And this wasn't a enough because recently a completely AI generated beer commercial popped up on Instagram too. This time it was put together by a production company called Private Island. They seemingly prompted these weird party goers using Runway's new Gen 2 AI model that lets users create short video clips instead of static images. It's super bizarre and the fact that Smash Mouth is playing in the background makes it even stranger. Seems like it might be a complicated process but it looks like now we can say and then I finally I talk about transhumanism which is the latest expression of the uh, belief that artificial intelligence will just go on getting more and more intelligent and that that poses dangers. So what they want to do is to equip these rapidly developing super intelligences with moral principles. But first of all, they can't agree on what moral principles. Secondly, they can't get any international agreement on, on what moral principles should be. And therefore, we do really face the danger of rogue technology, which would gradually take over our functions and our lives, so that we'll, we'll in a way, be trapped within the kind of systems that are set up by the machines, not our own systems. We'll lose control. And there's a lot of dystopian fiction about this. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to celebrate the joining of these men and these women. I will be the one who will connect you all right here, right now. Do not fear it. Embrace it. And five. lisp question. <laughs> I did have a lisp when I first had it cut up until about a month into it. I had to relearn holding my tongue tips together so my s would roll off the tip of it and not really separate and go th If 
can choose to collapse one reality to bring it down. The other will be forced into existence. and governments wanted to do it, but nobody understood biology well enough. And nobody had enough computing power and data to hack millions of people. Neither the Gestapo nor the KGB could do it. But soon, at least some corporations and governments will be able to systematically hack all the people. We humans should get used to the idea that we are no longer mysterious souls. We are now hackable animals. Data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. And if indeed we succeed in hacking and engineering life, this will be not just the greatest revolution in the history of humanity, this will be the greatest revolution in biology since the very beginning of life. Nothing fundamental changed in the basic rules of the game of life. All of life for 4 billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds. But our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces. From the imagination comes the story of a man. Go. Come on, boy, let's go. Grass is waiting for you. With the mind of a child. Yes, yeah, Cybo Man, he came to see me. Cybo Man? Comics, right? Yes, yeah, Cybo Man. <laughs> and a doctor. Virtual reality holds a key to the evolution of the human mind. With a vision of the future. I have a game in my house that you might like to play. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay. That was really bad. I have different games. I even have one that could help make you smarter. Now, ah! Job Smith is about to enter the world of virtual reality. Ah, it's gonna hit no, me! No, no, Job, just relax. It's gonna be like being up there with the stars, Job. They're going to another planet. His mind is like a clean, hungry sponge. Ah! I just graduated to the next level, Job. <laughs> You're not the one, old oh, man. Well, you've certainly changed. I don't know how you did it, but I approve. I absorbed Latin yesterday in less than two hours. Joe, where are you? Joe! A world where the normal course of events can suddenly turn inside out. You realize, Dr. Angelo, that my intelligence has surpassed yours. The imaginary becomes real. Trying to get inside my head, Joe. You can't hide anything from me, Dr. Angelo. And reality... We have no idea what he's gonna do. ...is all in your mind. For me, the entry point for artificial intelligence is, is movies. And I'm wondering if, if you think that there's a, there's a film out there that's got artificial intelligence right. Most AI movies, uh, futurist movies, uh, show one AI that's fighting for domination against the humans, or it's 
one or two groups of humans fighting for control of the AI. The war against the machines. I would recommend that we put the unit back in operation and let it fail. Her was actually a pretty good depiction because there wasn't one AI. Everybody had an AI. And that's what we see in the world today. You're dating a computer? She's not just a computer. You always There's not one or two AIs. There's one or two billion. Every smartphone is an AI. It's connected to the cloud, which can multiply its capabilities thousands or millions fold. Her is showing you what these devices will evolve into. They will be at human levels. We'll have relationships with them. Samantha was Theodore's uh, assistant and helped him with information and his schedule, but it was also his companion. I've never loved anyone the way I love you. Me too. That was a fairly realistic depiction, and the, the uh, screenwriter and director said they based the movie on my ideas. Within 15 years, he predicts all cars will be self-driving. Virtual reality will seem 100% real. More mind-boggling, by the 2030s, he predicts leaps in nanotechnologies. Microscopically small robots will eradicate all diseases. Both biotechnology, which is reprogramming the information processes underlying biology, and nanotechnology, these medical nanorobots, uh, will be able to address every disease and aging process. So as we get to the 2030s, and certainly by the time the 2030s are over, uh, we'll have addressed virtually all disease and aging processes. And, and then you go on further to say that by the 2040s, we'll be able to, to, to tap our, our own human consciousness into the cloud, correct? One of the points I made is that technology is getting smaller and smaller at an exponential rate and increasing in price performance. So uh, 25 years from now, computers will be a billion times more powerful per dollar. They'll be 100,000 times smaller. They'll be the size of blood cells. They can go inside the brain and connect the neocortex to the cloud wirelessly. In other words, our brains converge with intelligent machines. The result, a colossal expansion of human intellect. What are, the, what are the advantages, from your perspective, of having this kind of superhuman intelligence? Intelligence is the only thing that enables us to solve problems. Uh, life expectancy was 19 a thousand years ago. Even just in recent years, a kid in Africa with a smartphone, which is uh, very ubiquitous today, can access all of human knowledge with a few keystrokes. Uh, she's walking around with a trillion dollars of computation and communication circa 1970. And they're using that to solve real problems. It, we still have problems today in the world, and the only way we're going to overcome disease and aging and poverty and environmental degradation is with, through greater intelligence. What do you say to people that are concerned when they hear that computers might, might a, in a very near future, trump human intelligence and, and develop consciousness? What do you say to, to assuage their concerns about a, a dystopian future? Technology is a double-edged sword. Fire kept us warm and cooked our food, but also burned down our houses. And yeah. every technology has had dual uses for creativity and uh, promoting our health, but also being destructive. These new technologies similarly can be destructive. We use technology to extend our reach, our physical reach, and then we leverage our muscles to create great structures. And today we can use these devices to access all of human knowledge. So we extend our reach physically and mentally with these technologies. That's what we're going to principally do with AI. But they could also be dangerous. Already AI is used in warfare, for example. You think the future looks bright? I think you have to be an optimist to be an entrepreneur. If you knew of all the problems that you'd face in a project, you'd probably never start anything. Uh, but I've also written extensively about how these technologies can be dangerous and abused and how what we need to do to keep them safe and I think that's actually the biggest challenge for humanity in the 21st century. How do we reap the promise of, a of artificial intelligence and biotechnology and so on while controlling the peril? And I think we can do it, but not if we don't pay attention to the problem. Ray Kurzweil, thanks very much for making the time. My pleasure. Chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. 
And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, threescore, and six. a peaceful place in the sky. Are you going to heaven? No. Why not? You gotta be a good person to go to heaven. Ten years ago today, the artificial intelligence created to protect us detonated a nuclear warhead in Los Angeles. As long as AI is a threat, we will never stop hunting them. This is a fight for our very existence. Whatever's in there, they're sure worried about someone getting in. Yeah, we're getting out. Did you locate the weapon? Yeah, it's a kid. She built. I do want to win the trap. We are this close to winning the war. Execute her, or we go extinct.
They're coming to get me.
could destroy the space-time continuum. I don't belong here. Nothing but the blood of